Today, crab battle. Hey guys, I'm Angela and welcome back to Hobby Night and day four of Warhammer Fest 2021 online, where we're gonna look at the reveals for box games. They start us off with Underworld's Dire Chasm, the last and final set for that particular season, and it is a doozy. We are getting Elethane's Soul Raid, which is pre... We kind of knew were coming because we knew there were going to be some sea elves, but we had no idea what they were going to be, and I think they're absolutely stunning. The chat absolutely freaked the heck out over the giant crab. Crab battle! Crab battle! because I mean like it's a giant crab and it's amazing. Um, I immediately wanted to take and convert a tiny Silostra to put on top of it because if any of you guys have played Total War Warhammer 2 and you have the Undead Pirates expansion, she has um, a mount later on that is a giant crab. Um, it's not quite that style of crab, but it just, it reminded me of it. It made me really happy. It made me really, really want to see some like pirate models in Age of Sigmar or something like that down the line for maybe some undead guys because I just think that'd be really cool. But the sea elves were fantastic. I'm absolutely going to be getting this kit. I am a little bit sad that it's the final one for the season. Obviously, I think Underworlds has been very successful for Games Workshop, so I definitely think they're going to continue it. And I just don't know how long it's going to be between seasons because I don't actually remember what the length of time was between um, Dire Chasm and Beast Grave. I believe it was previously. So I'm a little sad that it's ending, but this next set is going to be very cool. Plus there's a couple that still aren't out because I don't believe the Orc set is actually released yet. So we still got some stuff coming and I'm very hyped for it all. Let me know what you guys thought of this particular set because I really, really like... So for the, for the Underworld set for the Crimson Court, I used, I did a painting video on it and I used some red metallic paints. Well, that whole set that Army Painter has for those red metallics comes with some blues and purples. And the Sea Elves, really, I really want to use some of those colors on them and do something neat with the armor. So I'm really excited for that. I look forward to that for a potential video later on down the line. But let me know what you thought of the final uh, Dire World or Dire Chasm Underworld set. Next up, we're going to Necromunda, where we got a look at the next house that's coming, and it's House of Shadows. And these guys look really, really cool. I love all of these models. I love the cybernetic snake thing that they have. Um, I think it actually has a specific name. Let me see if I can find the image. Yeah, this um, psychocentric or psych psychotetric worm psychotetric worm it's so cool so there's a model like a tiny little one of that which i always really love when they do these like 
the little small sort of additional pieces that you can bring into the game that are like either animal companions or uh, mechanized companions or whatever. So that's really cool. Plus there's a figure that's actually carrying one, which is terrifying because I think that they use these to like, I assume get information because these guys are designed to be like spy masters and assassins to a small extent, depending on like which version of them that you're running. But the piece that actually had me the most hyped for this particular set, because I definitely think it is up there as one of my favorites for what we've seen from Necrom Necromunda so far, was the Psychian Spectre. That thing is super, super cool. And the thing that actually like made me go, ooh, how exciting, was when they were talking about it on the live stream, it's actually a design that they pulled from original Rogue Trader, which I always love when Games, Wor Games Workshop goes and dips back into some of their older lore and everything and brings it back into the new models um, and you know lets it be as part of the actual modern lore and representation. So seeing that is really cool. It's really dynamic and of all of the more recent models from the box games that were specifically tied to 40k. Um, I actually think that this particular set is the most dynamic of the ones that they've done so far. And that's really neat because they've been doing a lot of really cool dynamic things with the Age of Sigmar line, but I feel like we haven't fully seen that translated into 40k yet. We've seen it a little bit with like the Necrons because there's been some like, there's that one, um, Necron character that is like ripping like blood out of a corpse or whatever. And so there's some cool like fluid dynamics happening there and some great motion. Um, but we see a lot more of that in AOS than we do 40K. And so it's nice to see some of that really starting to come into 40K through these models. And I hope we continue to see that diversification. But this whole set looks really cool. And I think like between these guys, the um, fire guys, and then the, um, I think it's the House of Water or the Clan, Clan Water, I can't remember. Those I think are my three favorites, just in regards to like some of the diverse minis that the lines have. Now, I'm really hoping that all this Necromunda stuff and that new starter set ends up being really cool because I would love to get into this game and this particular faction and like I said, a couple other ones really excite me. So I'm definitely probably going to be picking some of them up. Let me know what's your favorite house and if these guys interest you at all for playing the game. Hey guys. If you are enjoying this video, make sure to hit that like button and let me know about it down in the comments. If you haven't already and you're wanting more content, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon for notifications. And then if you want even more hobby goodness, make sure to follow me on Instagram or Twitter at hobby underscore night. Now let's go ahead and get back to the video. Speaking of Necromunda, we also got a look at a uh, weapons focus for Hired Gun, for the stub gun specifically. They showed this off. Now, I found it kind of interesting that they chose to show this particular trailer because the game is coming out in June, I think like early June, um, the first actually. Um, so it's coming really soon and they just released a different trailer that was about the narrative of the game and it involved a lot more of like the dog. It talked about like the world and everything that they included and I'm like, why didn't you use that for this presentation instead of this really short, you know, weapons just focus, which was just, it was very odd, especially considering that the hosts of the game or of the, um, of the, the presentation actually literally spent like two or three minutes prior to that trailer talking about how cool and diverse Necromunda was and how it was like a really cool setting for 40K and all this. So it's like, why not follow up that enthusiasm that your hosts are using with an actual trailer designed to show the narrative and world building? It's a really weird choice, but regardless, I'm very excited about the game and will likely be playing it at least a little bit on the channel in the future. And 
And last but not least, they teased us with a plastic Thunderhawk kit, which I really just don't think they're actually ever going to do at the proper scale that we all want it to be, but it's cool that it's coming to Aeronautica Imperialis. And there's a new starter set coming to it as well. And that has me actually very excited because Aeronautica is one of those games where I've always kind of been slightly interested because I do actually think the models are kind of interesting, um, but I never really, I've just never really cared super a lot about skirmish games with like dog fighting specifically. Now I know this is GW trying to compete with stuff like um, X-Wing and uh, Wings of War, I believe it is, um, and everything like that, which do do these dog fighting style games. But this new starter set that comes with Eldari and Space Marines really, really looks cool. The Space Marines I'm not as interested in, but the Eldari ships look so cool. Like, I actually wish there was a way to be able to get, um, like, to mix the box sets instead of getting the way that they have them where they just have, like, okay, this set is this one. Um, I think the previous set was um, Tau and... I don't remember actually what it was. And then the first... Orcs. Was it Orcs? Okay, so Tau and... Orcs were in the first. Yeah, Orcs were in the first one. So Orcs and Imperial Guard, I believe, were in the first one. I don't remember who came with the Tau, um, but there was a box set, I think, for that. And then they've done this one, which is Space Marines and Eldari. And I wish that they, you could like mix and match them or do like made orders so that you could pick which of the two starter sets you wanted to get. That is like a pipe dream. Obviously, they're never going to do that, but it'd be a really cool thing to do because honestly, I want the Imperial Guard and then the Eldari. I think that would be a really cool combo because I just also feel like those models actually look like they can fly. My biggest complaint with like the Space Marine ones, despite how cool they look, and the, despite the fact that they like really, really teased us with that uh, Thunderhawk trailer and everything, because I think people really bought into it of, oh my God, we're going to get one. It's like, no, we're talking about box games. It's going to be for Aeronautica, but it's very cool that that's happening as a separate thing, by the way. It's not something that you get in the starter set. But I think it's really cool that you have these two starter sets, and I've sort of lost my train of thought a little bit. Sorry about that. But overall, it's really awesome. I'm interested in the game a little bit with this, or at least picking up some of these models to paint, because honestly, painting those small scale uh, vehicles sounds like a lot of fun. The one thing I will say is I wish, I really, really wish if they want to keep focusing on these um, ship combat games and everything, I hope that one day that means they eventually bring back Blackstone Fortress. Or not Blackstone Fortress, sorry, um, Battlefleet Gothic. Uh, I looked at a Blackstone Fortress model off on, on my counter and then I was like, changed it. But I want them to bring back Battlefleet Gothic because one, the miniatures in that were really, really cool. They've never really done, I don't think they've ever done plastic models for it. They were only resin and metal and the resin ones are incredibly delicate and just, the spires break off of them all the time, but I feel like people absolutely love those models and the game was pretty successful. Like the video game that they did for um, Battlefield Gothic is pretty successful and everything. So I really wish that they had like brought that back um, when they had announced the game originally and stuff, but we'll see how it goes in the future. Uh, let me know if you're interested in playing Imperial, uh, Anotic Aeronautica Imperialis, stumbling all over my words now because it's been a long day. Let me know if you play it, what faction you're playing, and whether or not you're going to pick up this new starter set. All right, well, that has been it for day four. Let's talk a little bit about what the next two days are going to be because there's only two, day le two days left of Warhammer Fest, and I have some theories. For tomorrow, for 40k day, I legitimately think it's just going to be orcs. Now that to me is totally fine. I am very excited for that because I'm hoping to see a bunch of new orc models all tied to the um, Savage uh, or the Beast Snaga boys. And I'm, I'm okay with that. I do think that that is going to be very disappointing still to a lot of people because the expectation was because they split 40k into two separate days that there was going to be I think a lot more than what we got. And because the first day was so just a repeat of a bunch of stuff we had already seen, I, I think this was just them trying to spread it out and doing a poor job of it and not expecting the massive backlash that was the Book of Fire on top of the disappointment that was just showing only two new models for the sisters. So I think we're just going to get orcs. And like I said, I'm actually okay with that. 
I'm excited to see what we have. I hope there's tons of squigs. I just hope there's tons of little beasties running around um, and lots of just giant orcs because I'm actually really hyped for this army. Um, I think I'm definitely going to be building one. I haven't fully decided yet, but it's very much looking that way because these models are looking super cool and I'm wanting to see a bunch more. Saturday. Saturday is the bigger day, and I think a lot rides on Saturday for Games Workshop to sort of recover the general lackluster like enthusiasm that the fans have seemed to have for Warhammer Fest this year. It's really not been received super well. Chat hasn't been overly enthusiastic with them each day, despite there being some pretty cool things on some days. Um, but so I think there's a lot riding on Saturday, and I think if it's, I think it like has to be, I think it has to be like an Age of Sigmar announcement, um, preferably a new edition. Um, and I do, I do think I feel like it might be that only because they have been sort of indicating that the current stories are all wrapping up and they're bringing in all of these vampires. And that seems like they're trying to push for like a new story, focusing on them, and I feel like this is what they're leaning towards. So I am very hopeful that that is what we're getting. Cause I, I do think that would at least for some people alleviate some of the like disappointment from this week. I also really hope, but don't actually expect them to address Curse City on Saturday. I would love, I would love, 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 love for them to announce made to order Curse City boxes. But I just, I just don't know. Like I have no faith that they're actually gonna do the right thing here and, and do that. Um, I have no faith that they're actually going to speak to us ever again about it because they just have been so dead silent and they didn't mention it. Like anytime people were talking about it in chat, like it was just ignored. Um, I'm sure some of them even got deleted depending on how hostile they were. Um, so it's just, I don't know if they're gonna address it or not. Let me know what you guys think is coming for both the 40K day and for Saturday's event. I don't really know what else it could possibly be on Saturday other than those two things that would satisfy people. Like, I'm sure that they could do other stuff. I just don't know what it would be. And it definitely wouldn't be satisfactory. So let me know in the comments what you think. Um, I will see you guys tomorrow for another video. I have been Angela. You've been watching Hobby Night. I'll see you guys tomorrow.